Daniel chapter 10. I'm going to read verses 1 through 13. And I meant to send you a message and tell you to read chapter 10. So somebody text 11 o'clock and tell them I said read Daniel chapter 10 so they can be ready for church. <clears throat> it says, In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Bethelshazzar. And the thing was true, but the time appointed was long. And he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. Did you hear that? Although it was going to be long, he knew it was going to come to pass because he, he saw it. Anyway, in those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread. Neither came flesh or wine in my mouth. Neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. And in the four and twentieth day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, which is Hadikiel, uh, which is also really the Tigris, then I lifted up mine eyes and looked and behold a certain man clothed in linen whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphaz. And his body also was like the, the burial, and the, his face was appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like in color to polished brass, and the voice of his words was like the voice of a multitude. <clears throat> and I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men that were with me saw not the vision, but a great quaking fell upon them, so that they fled to hide themselves. Mm. Therefore, I was left alone and saw the great vision, and there remained no strength in me, for my comeliness was turned in me into corruption, and I retained no strength. Yet heard I the voice of his words, and when I heard the voice of his words, then was I in deep, a deep sleep on my face, and my face toward the ground. And behold, a hand touched me which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee and stand upright, for unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken uh, this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am I'm come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days, which is twenty-one. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the king of Persia. Okay, can I hear it? Can you, can you see it one more time? Then he said, fear not, Daniel, for the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten uh, thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I have come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days, which is twenty-one, but lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help to help me, and I remain there with the king of Persia. Lord, help me bring a word for thy people. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I, I want to speak to you from the subject, fight for vision. I didn't say fight for your vision or fight for the vision or fight for a vision. Fight for vision, whatever the vision may be that is of God. Fight for vision. And of course, we're in the 21 days of prayer. Uh, Daniel felt an overwhelming need to pray and fast uh, for his dear people. It was shortly after this intense period of prayer that he received a revelation of troubling events that was certain to happen in the future. It should be noted that verse 1 is written in the third person and that it refers to Daniel's Babylonian name, uh, Bethelzar. Most likely, Daniel did this to give an official title to the vision and to highlight the importance of the revelation from God. In the next verse, Daniel once again speaks in the first person. Daniel received this revelation in 536 B.C., around the same time that the Lord rescued him from the lion's den in chapter 6. 
This was in the third year of King Cyrus' reign. Right after King Cyrus conquered Babylon, he had issued a proclamation of freedom allowing all Jews who wished to do so to return to their homeland. Almost 50,000 chose to return under the leadership of Zerubbabel. When Daniel received this revelation, the Jewish exiles that had already returned to Palestine and were rebuilding their homes, shops, businesses, farms, and the temple. As an official in the governments of Babylon and then Persia, Daniel had access to official records. Therefore, he had probably seen reports that construction of the temple... Can, can I just stop right there for a minute? I'm, I'm, first of all, he had access to uh, government uh, 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 access of official records. C can I talk to y'all somebody? Because some, sometimes church people have problems with pastors and, and preachers and prophets talking to people in politics. But can I talk to you some for a second? If you're not at the table, you getting eight. <laughs> can I talk to you for a minute? If you're not at the table, uh, they eating up your rights. Come on, somebody. When, when Paula Dean was calling us the N-word, which, which most people call us anyway, who races, and we get caught up in frivolous stuff, uh, they revamped all the voting rights law while we were fussing about frivolous stuff because they were having David Copperfield moments, and they were changing legislation over here while we fussing about something petty over here. Oh, y'all don't want to hear me. But, but see, the thing about it, that's why we need God-filled women and men in politics to make sure that they put the kingdom before the world and the kingdom before America. Come on, evangelicals, because all I hear is when you say put America first is KKK. Oh, y'all don't hear me. When you begin to put the world and America before the gospel, I can't feel you at all. Can I just get political just for a moment? Can I just talk to the problem that I have when we say make America great again and we begin to talk about how we need to put America first? No, you need to put God first. Now stop lying on your money and saying in God we trust when you really trust the paper that is printed on more than you trust God. That was just a word from our sponsor. <laughs> yeah. Therefore, he had the reports. And if you look in Ezra, <coughs> they had they got to the point where they had opposition. So the saints had to get on their knees. He was deeply concerned, burdened, heartbroken, and grieving for his people and nation, he was consumed with a desire to intercede in their behalf. For three long weeks, the prophet was in mourning. He says that he did not eat any choice food during that time. He neither ate meat nor drank wine, and he did not anoint his body with oil. He was totally consumed by his concern with the fate of his people, the Jews. And Daniel prayed that the Jews would survive all the wars and the attempts of exterminating them through the ages. The Jews, that the Jews will remain faithful and be strong witnesses before the Lord despite the coming wars and bitter oppression. The Jews would complete the purpose for which the Lord had chosen them to be the faithful channel through whom God would send his holy word and the Messiah into the world. The Jews who had returned with Zerubbabel would remain faithful and not fail in their task of rebuilding the temple and nation. Daniel was a true prayer warrior. What a difference it would make if we would intercede for one another as, as Daniel did. What would happen if we interceded for our fellow believers once a day for a year? What would happen if you just stopped putting hate out there and praying? How much change for the good what our prayers bring to our families, churches, communities, and nations. God promises to hear our prayers, uh, 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 to hear our prayers uh, when we bring them forth. 
when we intercede for others in sincere and genuineness before him, when we intercede for others in accordance to his will, he will answer our prayers. He will bring about a phenomenal change in individual lives and pour out his richest blessing upon society. Listen to what God's word says about it. Matthew tells us, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Luke tells us, and I say unto you, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. Luke also tells us, and he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always pray and not faint. And John tells us, and whatsoever ye ask in my name, that will I do. And the Father may be glorified in the Son if ye ask anything thing in my name, I will do it. Come on, somebody. Ephesians 6 says, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, sorry, that's John, ye shall ask and it shall be done and it shall be done unto you, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Pray without ceasing. Oh, Daniel had an amazing vision and encountered with an awesome being. It was early spring, uh, the 24th day of the first month, uh, when the breath breathtaking encounter took place. Uh, Daniel was possibly taking time off from his official duties in order to observe the season of the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which spanned the first month of the year. The Passover celebrated the release of the Israelites from Egyptian bondage. And just recently, King Cyrus had released the Jewish exiles in Babylon from their captivity, and they had returned home. Thus, Daniel had reason to celebrate this particular Passover in some ways, but as just described in point one, his heart was still heavy with concern for his people. Come on, somebody. I'm still concerned for the people because racism still going on. I, I still concerned for the people because people still getting shot. Come on somebody. I'm concerned for the people because sometimes people have to go get proof that they got a job and get detained to cast their check because they are people of color. Can I talk to somebody for a minute? I know that Martin Luther King had a dream, but can I talk to you right now? If we're not careful and if we don't stand up to what's going on and pray without ceasing, we will repeat history. Oh, y'all don't hear me. I'm in the book of Daniel for a reason because Daniel said, I know you got released, I know you're free, but I need you to be vigilant. I know, I know you don't have to ride on the back of the bus no more, but I need you to be vigilant. I know you got the right to go everywhere, but if you're driving while you another color, you might get shot while you're reaching for your license. Can I talk to somebody for a while? I know you're hungry, but I need you to fast and pray and intercede for your people. Daniel was one man and delivered a whole nation. You can't even pray for your children sometimes. According to verse 4, Daniel was at the side of the Tigris River, or Hittikel, when suddenly he saw a man who was more majestic and awesome than any person he had ever seen. And that's verse 5 and 6. Though he was speechless at the time, Daniel would never forget what the man looked like. His clothing was linen. His belt was made of the purest gold. His body looked like a dazzling gem that reflected bright colors. His face was as bright as flashes of lightning. His eyes were like flaming torches. His arms and legs gleamed, gleamed like polished bronze. His voice thundered like the roar of a multitude. Who was this person? Some interpreters think that it was an angel. Oh, I, and, but some others think that it was Christ himself uh, and that stood before Daniel. Daniel you. <laughs> I believe was before Jesus because it says Daniel was helpless with fear in his presence, whereas he was not uh, helpless in the presence of the angel in the previous chapter, in chapter 9, verse 21. The description of him is very similar to Ezekiel's and the apostle John's description of the glorified Christ in Ezekiel 1 and Revelations 1. He knew the future and he swore a divine oath that only God could fulfill. Have you ever had an encounter with Jesus? 
See, see, some of us can't have an encounter with Jesus because we don't know how to beat our flesh into submission. See, what you're doing now in these 21 days is beating your flesh into submission. I know some people say, I'm a fast radio, and some people say, I'm a fast this and I'm a fast that. But if you fast food, baby, you can fast anything else because if you can keep from putting that pork chop in your mouth, you can keep from fornicating. If you can keep from putting that chicken bone in your mouth, you can keep from lying on your neighbor. If you can keep from eating when your stomach begins to rumble, you can resist anything. The first thing you want is food. Even when you're a little child and you can't speak, you cry ah, because you're hungry and you know you need something to eat. Don't know what the word is, but you need it. If you can just begin to separate yourself from the world and begin to connect yourself spiritually with God, God will give you deep revelation and you understand how messed up you are. Why I ain't going to judge Northern? Because I know that I'm messed up too. Don't mean I condone it, but I ain't judging no man. First of all, Jesus said he don't even know who's going to heaven. So how in the heaven you know where somebody going? Huh? Jesus said only God knows whose name in the Lamb Book of Life, yet we act like we know. Uh, they committed suicide. They had time to repent. But you judge somebody, if I shot you in the head right now, where would you go? I know I'm just so extreme. The problem is we think we God. You think you're sitting at the right hand. Jesus sitting at the right hand of God, and he say he don't know who's going to heaven and hell, but you know. Help me exegete the next text I preach, please. Because you truly know more than Jesus. He, to strengthen Daniel to receive the vision and to stress <clears throat> the tremendous importance of his message, the Lord himself appeared to the prophet in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Daniel and his companions' response to the amazing vision was sheer terror. Only Daniel actually saw the vision. His companions did not see the awesome person, but they did sense his presence, and they fled in terror. Can I talk to some people? Some people are not going to make it with you when you got a great vision because it's going to scare them away. Some folk couldn't move on Tad Plain because this place too big for them. Some people are going crazy. We used to have one aisle. Now we got four aisles. What we going to do? How we going to make it? Oh, Lord, you're going crazy over another aisle? How are we going to do all of it? Oh, Jesus. Here, take me now. <laughs> they heard it, but some people know you're going somewhere, but vision means you got to leave some folk behind. Can I talk to somebody? People, if you ever want to lead, more people are going to not like you because when you have a vision, you're going to have to say no more than you say yes. Because narrow is the way of righteousness, wide is the way of destruction. And when you got a vision, it dictates where your steps are order of the Lord. You can't just step anywhere. You got to be in God's presence and walk where he tells you to walk. And everybody can't handle the vision you have in your life. Stop trying to convince people of your vision that don't have a vision for themselves. And stop letting folk inbox you always talking about how they got a word about you. When you going to get a word for yourself? God don't even talk to me as much about me as you talk about me. Stop trying to tell me what I need to do. Stop trying to tell me how my life needs to be. Get in your word and work out your own salvation. Jesus. Help me. When Daniel caught a glimpse of this glorified person, he was emotionally overwhelmed and physically weakened. His face turned deathly pale and he became utterly helpless, falling to the ground. <clears throat> he heard the awesome glorified Christ speaking at the sound of his voice. Daniel swooned and fell asleep. Here is a lesson for us about being humble and surrendered to Christ. If we are truly, if we are to truly know Christ and to serve him, 
We must be humble and surrender to God as Daniel was. When we rebel against the Lord or disobey his holy commandments, we create a great gulf of frightening separation between him and us. Being separated from God means that when we face crisis or hardships, the Lord is not present to help. We are left on our own plow, uh, uh, on our own to plow through the crisis and best we can. It's a room back there. Only those ushers, come on ushers. Only those who surrender and humble themselves. Why do I have to say something? When I got ushers, can I get some bold ushers? Y'all edit this. My God. Only those who surrender and humble themselves to the Lord can expect to have his help. But, his, but this is the wonderful news of the Holy Scriptures. God will help those who surrender and humble themselves before him. Matthew 11, 28 and th through 30 says, Come unto me, all ye that are heavy labor and, and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know a yoke is made of two things. You have one yoke right here and a yoke right here. Have you ever tried to let a little kid help you carry a box and it becomes heavier because you letting them hold it and it begins to put you off balance? Well, God is saying, put your yoke to me because I let the weight be on me and not on you. Some of us keep trying to yoke ourselves to our friends. We keep trying to yoke ourselves to our politics. We keep trying to yoke ourselves to our fraternity. We keep trying to yoke ourselves to our career. But can I talk to you about an ever and present help by the man of Jesus Christ? Right? If you learn how to yoke yourself to him, your yoke will be easy. Stop trying to fight the fights on your own. You got to be like Daniel, get in your prayer closet. Oh. Ooh. Spiritual warfare does exist. Then you needed to understand that evil spiritual forces stand against the Lord and his people. Daniel's reference to a hand reaching down to touch him indicates that another heavy, heavenly being has entered the scene. Perhaps Gabriel. There suggests a significant break between verses 9 and 10. As though the awesome, glorified person of verses 4 through 9 has left the scene. Got to exegete the text. Still weak and trembling from his encounter with the awesome person, which in my theological ex exegesis is Jesus Christ described in verses 4 through 9. Because you do know the Bible describes Jesus all the way through. Everything points at Jesus. In Genesis, you know what I'm saying? He was the seed of the woman. And, and you know, in Exodus, he was a Passover lamb. And, and, and in Numbers, he was a pillar of fire uh, by, by night and the pillar of cloud by day. You know what I'm saying? So you got to keep on and understanding who he is and where he is. So, so the angel told the dear prophet that he was highly esteemed in the eyes of the Lord. Therefore, he was listening carefully to the special message that was now to be given to him. Hearing this, Daniel stood to his feet, trembling but fully alert. I need to talk to some Christians. I need you to learn how to pray. A whole nation's trajectory was changed by one prayer warrior. One. 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 One, we got a lot of folk in church. If all of us was to pray and really get on this fast, how would the trajectory of this nation be changed? See, you keep thinking too small. You keep thinking new beats grow because we got selfish minds. We do need new beats grow to do better. We do need new beast grow. We do need new beast grow to go to another level. But at the end of the day, we are called to be the head and not the what? Yeah. All right. That ain't just talking about your church. Because your church is the one little body. You, you feel me? And, and let, let me go on into The angel now gave Daniel a very special, captivating uh, insight into the spiritual warfare constantly being waged between the forces of good and evil. Apparently, the focus of Daniel's prayer for three weeks had been the future of Israel. Now, the angel informed the prophet that his prayer had been answered on the first day that he had begun to fast and pray. God's heart had been touched by the prayers of this dear servant, so the Lord immediately commissioned the angel to go reveal the future to Daniel. However, evil forces had delayed him. 
For 21 days, the demonic prince of Persia had resisted God's angel, delaying the delivery of the answer to Daniel's prayer. As the conflict and as the conflict and delay continued, God finally sent Michael, one of the chief angelic princes of heaven, to help the angel combat the demonic forces of Satan. Soon after, the angel was able to leave the combat long enough to bring God's answer to Daniel. Now, the angel was going to explain what would happen to the Jewish people in the future, for the message from God was a revelation of events yet to come. Can I talk to you for a while? The greatest uh, lie that the Satan has ever done was to show you and act like he didn't exist. You have to learn how to pray. How can you believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead and you don't believe in spiritual warfare? First of all, if you believe that a man died on the cross and rose on the third day, if you believe that, how can you not believe in spiritual warfare? You got to learn how to pray. The problem with the church is we, we worry about songs more than we worry about prayer. Oh, yeah. He said, my house should be a house of prayer. He didn't even say you had to preach. But you definitely need to be coming there with a spirit of prayer because that's your conversation with God. Oh. Hey, let me go on and get out of here. When, when Daniel learned that the spiritual forces had opposed his prayer, he was completely overwhelmed. <clears throat> In utter weakness, he collapsed to his knees completely speechless. Through prayer, he had been involved in a cosmic spiritual warfare and he was totally unaware of the conflict, totally unaware of the importance of his individual prayer, but his prayer was so important that the Lord had sent some of his most powerful angels from heaven to make sure his prayer was answered. How important prayer must be. What a lesson of us for us to seek God's face in behalf of others, both individual and nations. Do you see the importance of prayer? That's why we on this 21 day fast. You must fast and pray. And the truth be told, when you eating all the time, not saying you shouldn't eat because if you don't eat, you're going to die. You need to eat. But at the end of the day, what I'm trying to tell you is this. When you begin to release the umbilical cord from the world and connect it to the spirit because you begin to disconnect your flesh from what's going on in your mind, you begin to have a direct connection with God. You know how you're driving with your satellite radio and you go through the Norfolk Tunnel and the radio goes off because there's no signal? Sometimes your chicken mess up your signal. It's just like going through the tunnel. Yeah, yeah, them collard greens mess up your signal, baby. I'm telling you, them pig feet that messed you up. You ain't thinking about nothing. You happy. You laying down. Come on, somebody. And I talked to you for a while. When you begin to stop letting your flesh run you and you run your flesh, in the beginning, you're going to be tired and irritable, more irritable than you usually are because your flesh is mad because your flesh usually run the show. But then when you begin to stop eating for a while, your spirit begins to take over and begins to beat your flesh into submission. But once you really get in, come on, somebody. I was going around here with one of my, I, I didn't, I didn't swim. What? When I first got deep into the fast, I done swam. Now, I ain't never done this since I was young. Y'all see the salt and pepper now, right? I swam 675 yards, went and did core. Then later on, one of the young members, he wanted to play basketball. So I went to Fort Houston to play basketball, full court, and then came back and had two church meetings. All that, why? Because when you begin to disconnect your, your flesh, your spirit begins to give you supernatural power. Now, that was supernatural power to me. I ain't going to do like the other preacher and try to jump on the thing. <laughs> Y'all see that? Anyway. <laughs> All you got to do is hit in. It'll go off. Once more, God's angelic messengers encouraged Daniel. Touching Daniel's lip, the angel enabled the prophet to speak. Daniel told the angel that he was terrified at the spiritual warfare that is fought over prayer. He was deeply troubled and filled with anguish so much that he could hardly breathe. Again, what a lesson to us about prayer. You should be overwhelmed. Sometimes I know some people left the church because they got overwhelmed. When you follow somebody with vision every now and then, you need to fast and pray because you're going to be overwhelmed. Daniel's friends heard the vision, 
but they didn't see it. They left and ran in fear. And if you really want to have a vision from God, it's so big it'll overwhelm you. I'm sure that Martin Luther King was vacillating in the midst, wondering if he really wanted to march, and finally got to the point at the end of his day where he said, I ain't fearing no man. Longevity has its place. I, I ain't worried about it because my eyes have seen the glory and the coming of the Lord. When you get to the point and God is more important than your life, you're going to always be overwhelmed because your flesh you won't worry about running around with everybody because you already got too much excitement in your life. You won't worry about lying on folk and worrying about their business because you got too much excitement in your life. You ain't got time to worry about nobody when you got a devil to fight. You ain't got time for no cat fights and dog fights. People wonder why I don't address every time somebody say something about me. I ain't got time to worry about you and your little petty life. I got too much stuff to do. I have vision in my life. I don't have time to get in fights with you. I ain't got time to walk down out of the realm of the third heaven to come down here and deal with you. I'm trying to make those things that be not come to manifestation right here. I want God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. I ain't got time to chase you when you leave the church. I ain't got time to follow you because you mad. I ain't got time to answer your crazy tweet when you inbox me fooling this. I ain't got time for that. When you really get on the page with God, you'll be so overwhelmed. Just, just, just get on the fast. Just do one week for me. And you will see what I'm talking about. Ooh. Seeing how tired Daniel was. Uh, Sister Elliot, he gave him supernatural power. He gave him some strength. He, 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 the songwriter said, he touched me. Come on, somebody. Uh, therefore, the Lord highly favored Daniel and held him to the highest esteem because he was praying in favor, pronouncing peace up, upon Daniel. The angel again infused him with his strength. The prophet was now strengthened enough to receive the message of prophecy that was about to get. Come on, somebody. That's why I need ushers to help me. That's why I need armor bearers to help me. That's why I need deacon to help keep order in worship. That's why I need the praise team. Let y'all be on point. That's why I need all this stuff because I need people to hold my arms up like Moses' was, arms was held up. Why? Because God has given me a vision and I can't do it by myself. I need all the working parts. I know y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I need the camera people. I, I need the social media people. When you have a vision from God, you can't do it by yourself. That's why you can't be mean all the time. Come on, somebody. You need at least one friend, Jesus. You can't have an attitude with everybody. Now, I know the vision say you got to leave some folk behind, but the key word is some. You can't leave everybody. Jesus. I don't need nobody but the Lord. The Lord said you need somebody. Because he said one can set a thousand flight, two can set ten thousand flight. You need somebody. Everybody needs somebody <laughs> sometime. <laughs> oh, Jesus. That's why you got to beat your flesh into submission because your flesh is like a circuit breaker. When too much power will go through the, through the building, the circuit breaker will click and turn the power off. And sometimes when too much power will go through your flesh, your flesh will shut the circuit off. And that's what happened. He became so tired, but then he had enough sense to let God pick him back up again. Oh, yeah, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. He, he got overwhelmed, but he understood I can't do it by myself. I need God to help me. And when his flesh couldn't handle it, he didn't get into the flesh. Oh, yeah, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. See, see, I realized the church is what? A body. And sometimes individual personalities begin to short circuit the vision of the church because that personality in the church is a part of the body. And sometimes even churches walk in the flesh because they let a few fleshy people with big mouths, you know, um, they let a few people that don't want to be in order, you know, 
I don't want to be mean and, and tell the people with the babies to go. It's a room back there. They can hear the speakers. It's soundproof, and everybody can hear the sermon. It's mean. No, it ain't. Now, if I just put them out on the street, that would be bad. But it's a room designed for you. Because uh, people don't want to have order. Can I talk to some people that's bold? I need some bold people to step up in leadership. We got leadership training, 26, 23rd, 24th, because I can't keep walking around with scared folk. If you're scared, don't walk with me. <clears throat> not, in, not that close. You can walk in the pews and in the chairs. If you a punk, don't, don't walk with me no more. Just, I can't handle it, man. I, I get irritated. I, I'm on live TV and stuff. I can't. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I need some bold vote. I need to vote, but you can smile, though. You know? Don't be bold and make a crazy face. You got to laugh at me. You know, I need you to come on over here. And, yeah, I know. I know. Pastor Crazy. I don't care what you say. Just get them where they need to be. Anyway, the angelic message asked Daniel if he knew why he had come to visit him. Interestingly, before Daniel could respond, the angel stated he would soon return to fight against the prince of Persia. <clears throat> then sometime later, when the Grecian Empire arose, he would have to fight against the angelic prince of Greece. It would take nothing less. <clears throat> Can I tell you something about, and you see how they have these different spirits in different kingdoms? Because every place has a spirit. And Atlanta got a fake spirit on it and some other things. But Virginia has a spirit that always continues to kick against authority. When I started working with the city, I realized why the church couldn't hardly get in order because nobody want to follow nobody. And the ironic thing is, it's more military folk here than anything. How you got a military people all around and they don't know how to follow order? Even the angels have order. The demons have order. And that's why they keep you around hell and stuff so long because they work together. If we were really to come in order and stop trying to kick against the vision and the man and woman of God that lead the house. Oh, anyway, y'all getting quiet because you ain't fasting. Y'all can't hear what I'm saying. Lead a chicken along next week, this week, and I promise you, you'll hear what I'm saying. <clears throat> he, apart from God's righteousness and the restraining power of the holy angels, evil would run rampant across the face of the earth to destroy humanity. Before the angel could leave Daniel, he first had to tell him why he had come. He had to reveal to Daniel the events in the book of truth. Eventually, this is a book that covers God's plan for the world, for world history, part of which was to be revealed in chapters 11 through 12 of Daniel. In closing the revelation, the angel again stated that he and Michael had been opposing the demonic forces since the first year of King Darius' reign over Persia. As much as any passage in scripture, this chapter, chapter teaches the supreme importance of prayer. God's answers, God answers prayer, look at this, if we are sincere and fervent, genuinely craving for God to move and act, he will. God moves the events and affairs of society as well as the citizens and leaders all in the, to answer prayer. Because of prayer, God will strengthen and help us, save us and our families, free us from the bondages and enslaving habits of life, rescue our marriages and friendships, give us understanding and wisdom, help us financially, educationally, and professionally, give us and our loved ones the hope of heaven and life everlasting, deliver us either from or through whatever trial or temptation that confronts us even through the crisis of death. There is nothing that God will not do for a person who truly believes and seeks him. The fervent prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. However, we must always keep in mind, uh, in mind, in, 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 in mind the teaching of the present scripture. Because of the power of prayer, the demonic force of hell will oppose us. Can I talk to you for a while? The closer you get to God, the closer you get to Satan. Because the more a threat you are, come on somebody, even the great hip-hop writers of Puff Daddy knew that. More money, more problems. 
When you begin to get closer to God and you begin to pray and you begin to be a threat to the kingdom of God, you're going to have more temptation than anybody. That's why so many preachers and men of God and pastors fall all the time. Why? Because more temptation is going to come at us because if he can make us fall, he can get everybody around us because when the shepherd is hit, the sheep will scatter. Can I talk to you for a while? If you're really praying for God, I need you to start Checking who your friends are because when you start being elevated in the spiritual realm, God is going to bless you in the natural realm. And then the devil is going to come for you because he don't have any resources to create. He can only kill, steal, and destroy, which means his arsenal is limited, which means he ain't got time to be messing with you if you have no power or authority. But the beginning, once you begin to walk in it and walk in the power he has ordained you to walk in, the devil is coming for you. Come on, somebody. LeBron James, they're going to double team him. Triple team him, Michael Jordan. They would double team and triple team him. Why? Because they like, if we get beat, it's going to be by a scrub. <laughs> Some of us are going to be getting doubled and triple team. If a private can handle you, the devil is not going to send you a captain. The closer you get to God, the more power you walk in, the more temptation you're going to have. That's why you need to stop coming to church and act like it's going to be all cleaned up because humans are there. We all fall short of the glory of God. We all mess up. We all sin. We all do something wrong. We are all messed up and flawed. He never would have walked down 40 and two burning generations and enrolled himself in the flesh and died on the cross if you had the power to do it on your own. You cannot do it on your own. You have got to hold on to his unchanging. He going to look for you. The Bible says in Ephesians 6, 10 and through 18, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual weaknesses in high places wherefore take on to the whole arm of God that ye may be able to withstand the evil day and having done all stand stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching them unto to all perseverance and supplication for the saints. I need you to put on the full armor of God. That's why we on the fast. See, there have always been some people that have scoffed at the idea of a personal devil or the money angels who actually exist in a so-called spiritual world. These individuals feel like they're too educated and intelligent to believe such nonsense. They proclaim that these ideas are outdated and belong to the dark ages when people were too ignorant and superstitious to know better. But know the significant fact. These same people readily accept the ideas that the subconscious affects people's mind and body. Unseen and uncontrollable forces greatly affect people's behavior. Cosmic forces affect and determine people's futures. Blind faith controls what happens to people. I told you this already. The biggest lie Satan has ever told is to show you, uh, act like he doesn't exist. But God, because he is God, tells us the truth. He cannot do otherwise. Therefore, God reveals to us the fact that there is an evil force that has access to the spirit of a man and can influence people to do evil. He's called Satan, and he rules over darkness and spiritual weaknesses of the world. See, I, I, I know I'm, I might be boring some of y'all, but I'll be, you'll be all right. The word world comes from the Greek word basilius, which means to rule the realm. Uh, no, 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 wrong way. The world comes from the Greek word cosmos, which means the order or the arrangement of things. And the world is the systems, the systems that, that incarcerate people of color, the systems that keep racism alive, the, the systems that peace creates hierarchy of economic disparity, the system that creates poverty, the systems of the world. He's over those things, you know what I'm saying? He's over those things. And the problem is we need to understand that we have supernatural powers that can... Uh, 
This is the whole thing. If you get too caught up in what color you are and what's your ethnicity, you're not walking in the power God has given you. Now, now when you get pulled over, don't forget you black. Uh, don't forget. Yeah, I'm, I know I'm preaching to my white people too, but I'm just saying, if you, if you, you they ask your license, you sure you want it. You, you want to reach in my pocket and get it? Because I don't know if you want You sure you want me? To, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you. But at the end of the day, you can't keep me down because I have spiritual power. And I don't care how oppressed you have somebody. Come on, somebody. Frederick Douglass walked around free in slavery time. Why? Because he understood the anointing. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I'm not saying slavery was a choice. I ain't Kanye West in y'all. But... <laughs> But what I am saying is there's a power that you have in Jesus Christ that will break the bondage of what's going on right now in this day. If you learn how to fast and pray, you will be free no matter how much oppression is going on around you because you learn how to walk in the authority of Jesus Christ. Oh, that's another sermon. And the devil said unto him, all the power will I give thee and glory if you and glorify them for that is delivered unto me and whosoever I will give it. He, the devil was tempting Jesus or if he tempt Jesus, he going to tempt you. But let me read what F.F. Bruce words say. It's a theologian. He says, Satan and his demonic forces rank among the highest angel princes in the hierarchy of heavenly places. Yet all of them owe their existence to Christ through whom they were created. And who is according to the head of all principalities and power. But some at least of the principalities and powers have embarked upon rebellion against God. And not only seek to force men to pay them the worship that is due to Jesus. But launch an assault upon the crucified Christ at a time when they thought they had him at their mercy. But he far from suffering their assault without resistance grappled them and overcame them. Stripping them of their armor and driving them before him in his triumphal procession. Thus, the hostile powers of evil which Christians have and must encounter are already vanquished. It's only through faith uh, union. Uh, see, this is the thing. It's already over is what he's saying. The fight is already done. It's an illusion that you're going through. The world comes from the Greek word cosmos, which means the order of the arraignment, where you get cosmetology from, where you get makeup from. You know how some folk look pretty, but they're not because they made up. Well, sometimes stuff looks like it's messed up in your life, but it's not really messed up. It's just a certain circumstances that the devil has called you to see because the unseen is more real than the seen and don't care oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying the fight is already over before the foundation of the world was done Christ was slain he's already victorious he already went to hell and got the key to the kingdom he already beat the devil it's already over before you already prayed God had already answered your prayer. You just got to walk it out. It's already over. Walk it out. I know you hurt, but just keep on walking. Can I talk to some coaches? Remember back in the day when you got hurt, they didn't take you out the game if you was good. They leave you in and they say, are you hurt? You say, yeah. Coach is saying, walk it off. Can I talk to you right now? You might have been hit, but I need you to walk it out. Even if you're like Jacob and you got to walk with a limp, I need you to walk it out. I know you got hit, but walk it out. It's already over. He told Daniel, before you turn and pray, I was already dispatched. I had already answered your prayer. But the Prince of Persia in the second heaven kept me messed up. That's why you got to bind on earth your problems. And it will be bound in the second heaven. And you say, Lord, I need you to loose my blessings. You got to be like Daniel. Get on your knees and understand that it's already over. But I can't stop there. I got to keep praying because it has not been manifested down here. So when even though he told me, y'all don't hear me. I remember talking to Shaw and I said, trust these Shaw. 
We're going to get all them buildings. But we had opposition. We had folk not want to sell us all three. We had banks tell us we didn't qualify. But I had already heard God say, you're going to have all three. I had already prayed. I knew he answered. But I stayed on my knees. And I said, Lord, I know you said it's over. But they tripping at the church conference. I know you said it's over. But they say we can't have a loan. I know they say it's over. But the church is not in full agreement. And he said, I told you, you going to have it. Just keep praying. Oh, you don't hear me. Can I talk to you? Can I talk to you? What is it that God has promised you that you done already prayed for and he already gave you the answer? Get off your blessed assurance and walk it off. Stop sitting down. Get up and walk it out. Get in your prayer closet and say, you slippery servant, unhand my blessing. I ain't gonna do the whole sometime. What is it? God told you you could have. If it's a person, don't lay hold on them. They probably want God. But when God gives you a blessing, see, this is the whole problem. Daniel, in the beginning of the text, says, I know it's true, but it's gonna take a long time. Can I send it to Black History Month? What the king said, I may not get that with you. But I know one day you ain't gonna be on the back of the bus. I know one day you're gonna be free. Prophets can see before other people can see. We all can have some type of prophetic word when we get in our prayer closet and begin to beat our flesh into submission. He had already answered Daniel's prayer. He said, Daniel, I already answered you, but I couldn't get here. So just know your prayer. See, y'all, y'all, see some of y'all don't understand small signs. Oh, yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all don't hear me. Small, small signs. Even when people were telling me in touch wasn't going to happen around the whole city, God already gave me a sign. Y'all all sitting at the table. You ain't tell me no on the phone. You trying to tell me no on my face, but you here. <laughs> I look at it as a sign. If I got all y'all together, you trying to look for too many big signs. Let this sermon be a sign. Let this text be a sign. Daniel's prayer had already been answered in heaven. You pray, thy will be done on earth as it what? It already been done in heaven. But the angelic beings from the third heaven had to fight through the second heaven to get here. You got to keep praying. This 21-day fast is designed to give you some discipline. Because some of y'all pray one day and like it's supposed to happen. Remember Job? Job prayed the same prayer every day. Covered his children all the time. Just in case they did some wrong, gave sacrifices all the time just to make sure. Now, you ain't got to go sacrifice your camel, your dog, or your cat. All you got to do now is go to the throne grace of Jesus, who will answer all prayers, who will not withhold any good gift from you. I need you to walk this out like Daniel. God has already answered your prayer of healing. I need to make sure I find... Brother Jones, make sure I find Brother Jones at 11 o'clock. He's still here. And we already prayed that God was going to have him fully recovered. He's going to walk again. He's moving. They said he was going to die, but he's still here. Remember? They gave me that one day to live, and we all prayed in that church 
Baptismal service. Power of prayer. Power of prayer. Power of prayer. Power of prayer. I need you to learn how to pray. I know you can sing. I know you can play the guitar. I know you can play the organ. I know you can get down with that. Jesus, help me, Lord. I know you're gifted. I know you know how to do social media. I know you know how to help the pastor. I know you know how to do that. I know you know how to teach Sunday school, but can't you pray? Prayer is the most powerful weapon you have. And I need you to be in the midst of this. This fast is not just so you can just not be eating and lose weight. It'll be a byproduct. But it's for you to make sure you have prayer in your life. Because you got to pray to keep the fast right. Now, at least I gave you Sundays off. You got a cheat day. Eat all you want. You got a cheat day. But I need you to fight for the vision. And the only way, thanks. And the only way you can fight for the vision is if you pray. Why? Because when you let your personality get into it, you begin to mess up God's vision. See, what mess up church is personalities, people. Because when they start doing it, they don't want to lose their identity. They don't want to lose their control, their perceived control. In fact, the problem with the church is we fight over something that don't even exist, power. Nobody has power but God. I don't even have power over the church. God lends me his authority, but I don't have power. The power that he funnels through me comes through the authority he has given me. But you don't possess the power. And the reason why the fight goes on everlasting because nobody ever has it because nobody ever will because nobody has power but God because the head of the church is Christ. And the problem with the church is the greatest of these must be servants. Serve. Daniel sat in his prayer closet and prayed and God visited him and was beginning to change the trajectory of everything that was going on. So you can't look at the order of the Bible to canonize because it's not really in the same order. You need to even buy, thank you, Sister Mary, for giving me my chronological Bible because, it's, you know, the Bible is not really Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. We get into that another day. Daniel was praying at the same time stuff was going on in Ezra and right before stuff was going on in Nehemiah. He was praying for that. He was praying for the walls to be rebuilt. He was praying for Ezra to be able to rebuild a wall or somebody to be able to do it if you really exegete the text. So all people were walking out stuff, but the prayer words is why it was happening. Old school. Can I talk to old school, mature adults, whatever you want me to call you right now? Don't be offended. I'm just preaching. <laughs> David got to the point where he couldn't go to war no more. He asked for some water in the middle of the fight. And brother the water, look here, David, drink this water, but don't come out here no more. We need your wisdom. We need your wisdom. We need your prayer. You can't go fight all the time. You're going to be tired. Stop going to the emergency room trying to be security all day long, walking around the building. Sit down somewhere. <laughs> Tell somebody else what to do. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got time to be praying for you when you just sit down somewhere. Use your wisdom. You need to pray and watch over us. Pray for the pastor. Pray for the leaders. Pray for the deacons. Pray so your prayer can make differences in the lives of the church. You understand what I'm saying? That's what we need. Daniel was in his prayer closet. The trajectory of Jerusalem and Israel was changed because of his prayer life. He prayed when Xerxes gave a decree saying that Ezra can't rebuild the wall. He's the reason why Nehemiah was able to rebuild a wall because Daniel was interceding. He said, it may not happen right now, but it's going to happen. Your prayers may not have been answered right now in this manifest time and space. But because you prayed them, God has already dispatched it. You just got to pray a little harder because it's already done in heaven. You just got to get Michael and Gabriel down here. You just got to get it to manifest on earth as it what? 
is already done in heaven. When you prayed, it was done. You just have to keep pressing until it happens. So you can bring what's happening up there down here. Now I know some of you all wary. I don't know what he's talking about. Because you can't hear this type of word if you don't know Jesus. Jesus gives you the keys to the kingdom. Remember when, they, when God was teaching all this stuff about the kingdom and then they hear about acting like they knew something. Then when he left, hey, Jesus, explain us that parable. The disciples didn't know either. But they had a relationship with Jesus, so he told men. You have a relationship with Jesus. He can tell you what it means. But if you don't have a relationship with Christ, in order for you to disciple what's going on when you begin to get meat instead of milk. You understand what I'm saying? I need you to right now make up your mind. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I need you to come to him right now. Is there one that says... I want Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. You may come right now. Hello, I'm Pastor Willard Maxwell of New Beach Grove. And I just wanted to let you know, I believe that God is speaking directly to us through this ministry. And I believe that there may be some messages that you've missed that are life changing for you and you need to take the time to order. Or maybe there's some message that you heard that you know a friend or, or a coworker or a family member, even an enemy's life may be changed. And let me tell you this, in the Bible it says, don't stack up treasures here on earth that the moth will eat or the water will wash away. It's it says, stack up your treasures in heaven where they, where they will last for eternity. John says, in my father's house, there's many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. What I'm telling you is this. The way you stack up your crown and build your mansions in heaven is when you give a life-changing word to someone or share salvation. You don't have to be the one bringing the word. You can just buy the word and send it to someone and you're stacking up treasures in heaven. I'm believing that you're going to make the right decision and you're going to get this series or get a CD or get a DVD for somebody, it's going to be life changing. And instead of building up treasures here on earth, you're going to take the time to build up the treasures in eternity where you will live with your father forever. Be blessed.